All right, guys, good morning. There was a big debate in my house in my kitchen this morning about which joke I should tell. My son actually demanded that I tell one of his jokes. So the one that won out is, Tara, do you know why a nose cannot be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a Sam joke to me. But you know, it gets everybody laughing. We got to get Sam at my Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. And we are here Wednesdays where we talk about relationships and communication. And before we go to our guests, we have a couple of questions to get us grounded today. I want to start with my dear friend and co-host, Tara. Tara, where are you and what are you grateful for? I am right where I need to be, which is right here and nowhere else. And I am grateful this morning, especially for my friendship with you. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, that's so heartwarming. I love asking these questions. And Sorrel, I'm going to ask you the next one. Let's see. How are you and who are you going to hug today? Mm -hmm. Catherine, I am the way I say I am. And today I am vibrant and joyful. Mm. And mm. I'm going to hug my son. That's all. Oh. Say. Wonderful. <laughs> he celebrated yeah. an anniversary. Uh, he's been married almost 15 years. Oh, my God. Wow. wow. <laughs> he's a lucky guy today to get hugged by you. Uh, Thank you. And I've got one more question. I am going to ask our friend Stacy. Stacy, what time is it? The time is always right now, right here and right now, That's maximizing great. this moment. I love it. I love that energy he brings. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Okay. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Tara, who's going to introduce our guest today for this juicy conversation. Tara. Good morning. Thank you so much. Welcome to Wednesdays on the Daily Huddle, where we talk about everything communication and relationships, because we know that more effective communication builds better relationships, and better relationships builds better families, better communities, and better business. And today, we have guests that are going to share their communication expertise and how it built an entrepreneurial truly an empire. And before I introduce them and ask them some questions, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kimberly and Zach Odie. Zach and Kimberly Odie are passionate about family, relationships, life experiences, opportunities, and education. Interestingly, they began their career as school teachers and quickly transitioned from teaching in schools to teaching financial concepts. They have spent the last 20 years in, financial, in the financial services industry educating families about wealth. They love little more than seeing hope through the eyes of their clients. Zach and Kimberly also lead a large team of entrepreneurs. Their ability to design a blueprint for realizing goals and dreams with their clients and their teammates is what sets them apart from a traditional advisor. They are true wealth coaches and inspirational marketers. Hold on to your seats, y'all. Zach and Kimberly have been married for 24 years and have raised four girls. <laughs> so while chasing their dream, they work to instill in their girls the same desire to experience life and believe in possibilities. Zach and Kimberly believe that life is meant to be lived and success is just a decision. Welcome, Kimberly and Zach. We are so excited to hear about your journey to success. Thank you so much for having us. We, we are blessed to be here today. Yes, indeed we are. I love, I love those questions at the beginning. I, I was going to stand up and, and reach and get a clock after what, what Stacy said. So uh, we have a clock hanging right here in our, in our workspace, but uh, it's, um, 
it's pretty fantastic, actually. Oh! <laughs> You're welcome. The, 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 the time is now. The, time the is daily now. huddle is over. <laughs> okay, good. You're welcome. That is it. That is so awesome. Nope, that, nope, that's nope. A, Constant reminder that that um, that you know now is the time to whatever it is that you're going to do, do it now. Don't wait for it. So that is sweet. You guys, um, you know, you hear inspirational and motivational speakers, and it kind of just rolls off your back. It all sort of sounds to it feels like it just has a buzz in your ear. Um, but being around you all, um, it's it's like watching somebody live motivation day in and day out. So what I'd like to do, and I, I truly mean that, what I'd like to do is do something that Brene Brown is known for is tell us your story. Tell us how you got here. Ooh, that's a big one. I, I, from the very beginning, so how we got here, um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a long one. We, 24 years marriage on the 1st of August, right? So that, that tale started two years prior to that. Um, and we met in Athens at the University of Georgia. Um, standing room only, and Kimberly told me that I could get up or scoot over, and I'd never met this person in my life, so I said, okay, and, and here we are, over. 24 years later. End <laughs> um, of that, we, um, we both were trying to decide where we were headed in life. We knew that we wanted to, you know, we used to say we want to be rich and play. We want to, you know, that was our, what do you want to do when you grow up answer, um, and we were looking for, for fulfillment in that, and uh, both of us went into the education world, I'm from a long line of teachers. I mentioned that earlier when we were talking prior to broadcast and um, seeing that wanting to make a difference was big for me. Um, and uh, we realized when our first our first daughter was born that that childcare was expensive. Right. And we love what we did and the mission of of education. And I will never take anything away from teachers at all uh, for that. Uh, but we realized that when our second daughter was born, um, that one of our teaching salaries was going 100% to pay someone else to be with our kids all day, every day. And so uh, we knew one of us had to make a change or we had to make a change together to, to not deal with that. And so um, along comes uh, Kimberly's drive and determination to make something different happen. And, uh, and that's a big part of our story is as, as a team, as, as a couple, a lot of times you have one that catches a vision or catches an excitement and the other one is kind of an anchor in the water. And I was definitely the anchor. So um, but but we stuck it out and we stuck together and she was very tenacious and did not give up. So what happened when, you know, you went out on maternity leave and, and how did the world that we're in now come to be? Well, um, I don't know that it was by accident because nothing's really by accident. Right. But um, we needed more money because my one of our salaries, because we made the same thing, was paying for somebody else to raise our children, like Zach said. So um his aunt came along and said she had an opportunity and it was part-time. And for whatever reason, I said, yes, two babies at home, Zach coaching, me coaching on maternity leave. And, and I really just stuck my toe in part-time. Um, but I knew I had to make a change. I knew I had to have something different. I knew I wanted to, to raise my kids and I wanted to be there with them and be there for them. And as much as I love teaching, because we both did, and I still feel like I teach every day. It's just different, right? Um, <clears throat> the opportunity to have the freedom and the time to be with our girls wasn't there. Um, so I just, I stuck my toe in, fell in love with the business, fell in love with the industry. Um, McKenna was born in September. So she's always my gauge of like how long we've been in this industry <laughs> um, because I started when I was on maternity leave with her and she will be um, 20 in September, right? She'll be 20. Mm -hmm. I'm like, which one is it? Um, yeah. But she'll be 20 in September. So almost 20 years. Um, <clears throat> But um, with that, it was just, it was something that I had to do, I decided in March that I'd made enough for that, that moment um, to at least take the next year to see if it was something that we could sustain. Of course, Zach stayed for another year because that was the responsible thing to do, right? We had our parents and our ears chirping and, and just, you know, probably was the responsible thing to do for that moment. And then he left the next year and, and we haven't looked back and that's been literally almost 20 years ago, so. That's yeah. our story. We go. I was just going to say there's there's a piece she leaves out of that because I was I mentioned that that <laughs> I was an anchor in the water and I definitely was not the um, the the jump off of a cliff and go out and 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 try something scary right I was all about keeping my feet on the ground and we had salaries coming in and those kind of things so that was a tense year she spent a lot of time 
working and I spent a lot of and, and building that that business. And I spent a lot of time, you know, being Mr. Mom at home after working at school all day. And so there were sacrifices and there were arguments and discussions. And and I said, OK, fine, if you think this is good and you can do this, then um, you're a special ed teacher. And if anybody knows anything about the need in education for special education, it's very, very high. I said, I know if we have enough money in the bank for one year of your salary, even if you fail, you can walk right back in and get your job back the next year. So I was like, you fine. Game on. Game on. <laughs> well, well, she doubled me that year uh, working uh, fewer hours. And she used to uh, call me. This is, I think, a cell phone was the size of a brick at that point in time. But she would call me uh, while I was at lunch with my seventh grade students. And I always say eating mystery meat in the school cafeteria. And she's out with adults having adult conversation at a nice restaurant, with a, <laughs> uh, you know, a salad with some salmon on top of it. And she's just tell, reading me up and up. Well, I miss you. You know this. I hope it's going well at school. And so that year I was like, I'm not going to be one up by this. I'm, I'm going into this world, too. But there was a small piece about that that really pushed me over the edge. And that's this is the truth. It wasn't the mystery meat. It wasn't the, the lunches or the hours. Um, we were having a conversation that year where I was still teaching and she was full time in the industry. And, and as teachers do and as families do, you get around the table, hopefully, and you talk about your day. You talk about experiences that you had, what went well, what went. And I was talking about a student of mine in my class that uh, came back from Christmas break, a completely different child. Um, they, they were, you know, as teachers will say, you know, you've got the kids that, that are just off the wall behavior wise that drive you crazy. You never forget their face or their name. You got the kids that are overachievers that are, you know, always Mr. Odie, Mr. Odie, Mr. Odie in you your face. Your um, anybody in sales that said the most, uh, the most beautiful sound is your own name has never been a classroom teacher. I promise. <laughs> so, um, and then you've got the kids in the middle that, that are not really overachievers and they're not really, they, they don't stick out on the bad end of the spectrum either. And you kind of they kind of blend into the to the the world of teaching over decades. And uh, this kid came out of Christmas break, and she was a much more lively, bubbly child, asking questions and, and involved and excited. And we were talking about it, and one thing came to another. And over dinner that night, we realized that Kimberly had put together a financial plan for her family, and it pretty much brought them from where they thought they had no option but bankruptcy. And they were, you know, obviously there's a lot of tension in the home about money and those kind of things. And that was gone for their family. And I kind of attributed, well, I didn't kind of, I attributed that change in the home to that change in the child. And, and so never had that conversation with the family after that. But I said, you know what? I can teach seventh grade kids about what happened in ancient Asia, or I can teach their parents how to make their home life a better place. I can, I can relieve the stress that's there. And so that was really what pushed me out of the classroom um, and, and that's kind of the, the mission we've been on since is um, not not help the wealthy get wealthier. It's help help the people that don't understand financial concepts and help people that need that that knowledge to gain it and to put them put them in a better place. So that's our story is how we started. And then we've just been passionate about it since. Mm, thank you for sharing that. I've heard that before. And um, I was really hoping we would get to that story early on because it reminds me what a natural storyteller you you guys are. I mean, you're this power couple and your personalities are so different, but at the end of the day, here we are just sharing stories, which makes me feel so connected and have so much admiration for you. Uh, so I want to thank you for that because that's a big part of what I do. I wonder though, um, if it's those stories that helped you to remain courageous. I mean, this had to be scary. You had two children, right? When you left, I mean, I keep on thinking about the insurance, the benefits <laughs> and, and so how, many, how many so entrepreneurs that. aspire to be you. I mean, you all live a very nice life. Um, and tell me about those times when you felt fearful. How did you overcome it? <clears throat> oh, it's going to sound really cheesy, but I like to push it away, right? Because if you allow fear in, sometimes it can take over and it can control you and control your mind and control your thoughts. So a lot of, of what we do, what we've learned, what we've trained on through the years is really brainwashing ourselves, right? If we don't, the world will. So telling ourselves every day and, and positive affirmations and just knowing where we're going, it doesn't mean it's easy. 
because it isn't easy, right? But it is possible. Um, so I think for me, it's it's headstrong and head down, go to work, focus on your goals, know where you want to be um, and absolutely go there. Um, we use this all the time. Um, Zach's, 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 River, Zach's dad um, has always done um, river sports and worked on, on the river and, and with boats and canoes and kayaks. And so it's a lesson that we learned very early on in our, our marriage, I guess, because I was pregnant with Emma. <clears throat> we decided we were going to go down the Nantahala. If anybody's ever been down the Nantahala, right? For me, that was like a big deal. It was a big river, right? And I'm eight months pregnant. So that's really stupid. Like, <laughs> it's just not something you should do. We were following another piece of advice. He said, <laughs> before your first child is born, live it to the fullest, right? Because there are things you don't go down the Nantahala eight months pregnant. It is yeah. not a good idea. But anyway, Do so we're in the very beginning of it. I'm, <laughs> we're in the very, very beginning of it. I'm a total novice boater. I'm still a novice boater, but then that was like maybe my second time in a canoe. And then Zach's like, okay, you see this rock? And I was like, yes. And he goes, don't hit it. No, that, you're, you're telling it wrong. You got, don't look at it. Don't look at it. <laughs> You look where you want to go. No, no, no. I was going to be there. I was going to say it. it was, but, but the goal was not to hit the rock, right. right? So the whole time I'm paddling, watching this rock, so we don't hit it. And guess what we did? Yeah. We hit the rock and we turned over and my big old pregnant self fell out. And it's freezing too in the Nantahala. Good news is we got out at the beginning instead of trying to go down the rapids. So you're saying but, we quit. But the point is, is... <laughs> what you focus on is what happens, right? So as far as in life, if you go and you focus on your fear and you focus on your insecurities and you focus on what you don't want to happen because you don't want that to happen, ultimately you're going to hit the rock. It is going to happen. So I think in, in life, especially as an entrepreneur, you know what your bills are, you know what you have to make, but if you only focus on that amount, that's all you'll get or maybe a little bit less. So it's focusing on where you want to go and really keeping that mindset and keeping that vision of, of where you want to go in life so you don't hit the, the rock in the middle of the water and fall out and, in the canoe. And, yeah. But yeah, so. So I, I mean, I think that, most people, uh, when they want, they, they, they think about the ideal life of an entrepreneur, they think about the way it is after the work, what the way it is after the, the struggle and the struggle's real. I mean, when you, when you make those commitments, you, you to, to leave income that's coming in to go and create income that hasn't come in yet. And, and that's kind of what, what that step is. I mean, you shift and eat a lot of beans and rice, right? You make those changes and commitments. My, our kids, I'll tell you what, they could have some bean pasta. They could have some bean tacos. We could make one crock pot of beans and we'd all eat like high on the hog for a full week. They didn't know any different, right? They didn't know, but we pushed through that, right? And, and it's, um, it's the work, but for me, the, the reality of being able to be there um, and staying focused on why we wanted to make that change was to be with our kids and to, and to, to, to not be uh, trading time uh, for, uh, with our family for just enough to get by um, was the focal point. I think that might, might be what you were asking about, Tara, but um, mm -hmm. there, there's so many things that uh, in, in a time frame like this, there's so much in, in this conversation is this topic has had us talking so much since we talked about coming on here that so many stories and so many things have come up that uh, I'd, I'd love to share, but that's uh, kind of where we are with that. I um, Thank you. I would love, as I think about this, I just want to go a little bit deeper on this one topic, because I think that anybody that's on here that's a parent can relate to stress and not wanting to deliver that to your children. And so I think, and I'm glad that you mentioned that you guys were living on beans for a, a week at a time and that, you know, it wasn't easy in the beginning and you had a very tight budget and you just kept having babies. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, but I, if you, I would imagine you've had times where your stress was projected onto your children. Um, but you guys have learned from, from my minimal experience with you um, to do the opposite. I mean, I've seen Zach sing and dance. This guy can sing and act and dance y'all like you wouldn't believe. And somehow you find the energy even in the face of stress to bring that to your family. And that's something I speak to a lot. And I wonder if you could tell us how you do it. 
Oh, wow. I mean, I think some of that's compartmentalizing, but I think also being in the moment, right? Um, and, and that stress is there. Uh, and it's going to be there. If it's there right now, it's going to be there tomorrow morning and I can deal with it tomorrow morning. But if I have a night at home where we're cooking spaghetti and my kids are wearing their princess dresses and dancing around, I want to be in that moment with them and I'm going to dance and be silly with them. It just so happens that my wife videos this most of the time and posts it <laughs> on I social media. <laughs> um, so that that's why all these, these this footage gets out there. But um, yeah, I, I think that... Um, my kids have always, not always, they're, they bring stress, right? They fight, they argue, they do those kind of things. And our concern about them and their success, um, you know, I've mentioned earlier, somebody told us before Emma was born, she's our oldest, that, uh, that we need to see all the movies and go out to dinner together as much as we could, because after we had our first child, our world was going to change and that we would never stop worrying. That would be the first day of the rest of our worrying Thanks. life. I was like, wow, that was very uplifting. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, but- uh, It was so, horrible. So, um, but yeah, they do bring stress, but also um, that's what life's about uh, is, is being with, in my opinion, is enjoying time uh, with family. And we, we spend so much time, I think, in, in the way we're supposed to be is, work hard now, right? So that one day we can, we can live a certain way. Um, and I think it's important to realize life's happening every single day and, and wherever you are and whatever you're doing, that's life. And, and, and there are, there are pieces of that that are stressful, but, you know, find the ones that, that bring you out of that stress, find the good stuff. And that's I think what we've always, um, worked really hard to not shelter our kids from it because I think that's part of their life too. I'm sure they knew at some point, or at least now as they're older, they look back, they realize that we really did eat beans like for, for, you know, a couple of weeks at a time on occasion. Like I think they can process it, but then it was never something that we wanted to dwell on. Right. Like we teach positivity. We teach Anything is possible, right? Might not be easy, but it's possible. You can do it. And we always wanted our kids to see that. So even if it was a tough moment for us, we wanted to make sure that that we um, that, that we didn't project that onto them because it, our biggest why has always been our family and it's always been our kids and it's always been teaching them that it's possible and teaching them that you can and teaching our team that it's possible and teaching them that you can. And I think if we had stopped and said, it's a struggle this month, then that's what they would have focused on. And we just wanted them always to focus on happiness and positivity and everything else will work itself out. It always does. Nothing is as bad as it seems. I know that sounds cliche. Are you laughing at me? I'm just, <laughs> Sorry, this, is, this is this is our house. I'm on the other side saying, okay. I hear My you. kids call I it you. juju, right? <laughs> and they're you. like, oh God, here goes mom. So. But it's true, you know, and, and it is. And the more I think you can really ingrain that into yourself and into your brain your world is beautiful i tell people all the time turn off the news go sit outside put your phone away and listen to the birds because they chirp every single morning because they do yeah. so so beautiful thank you um i'm going to give you the cocktail napkin i think that holly gave me a long time ago my daughter it says i'm not a nag i'm a motivational speaker <laughs> <laughs> perfect uh, I need Catherine. to try to do that. <laughs> Catherine, I, uh, you have been quite a successful entrepreneur in your lifetime, um, and you still are. So uh, I would love to hear your thoughts and questions for Zach and Kimberly. Well, gosh, it's first of all, it's just really motivating and, and powerful and inspiring. Um, you know, I did have questions, but then you went on to answer them, you know, about how do you manage the distractions? And you said, you're, you be present, you know, keep your eye on the ball, but like be present with what's happening at the moment. And I guess I wonder, you know, I struggle sometimes with the feelings that are going on inside of me, the feelings of stress, right? There's intellectual stress. And then there's like, I can feel how stressed I am. How do you, how do you manage that when you're in that moment, you're wanting to be present, but you, I mean, physically are like, whoo, this is a lot. I think jumping jacks help. <laughs> okay. So I'm just, she's not I'm kidding. Just saying, she's yeah. not kidding at all. She's okay. Like, I'll go take a take a minute. She'll tell somebody, look, you got to settle down, go do 10 jumping jacks. And Sometimes I make them FaceTime me while they do it, just so I make sure that they do it. But um that's hilarious. I love that. I love that, but it speaks to the somatic experience, right? Where you're just trying to move energy through because worry can be a lot of things, stress, it could be stuck. Usually it's stuck, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And you're talking about moving the body and, and moving it through. You know, one of the things that in our, in our career, we've been blessed with are, are good mentors. And I think that to have somebody that, and when you're, when you're leading your family or you're leading your, your kids or you're leading an organization to have somebody that um, we say it's like reverse plumbing, right? It, it stuff blows uphill in this, in the business world. Otherwise you kill your business. You kill, you, you can demotivate everyone. If they know the leadership is, is struggling, but you got to be able to communicate. You got to be able to talk to somebody to get that, to get that off your chest. And we have literally been very blessed to have mentors that we could call and say, look, I'm dealing with this right now. And most of them had been through something similar to that in their career or in their path. And they've been able to say, you, you got to stick it out, right? This is what you got to do. You got to communicate, you know, even to the point where it's like, and, and we have a, we've been very blessed to have a business partner. That's also our life partner. So that's, we can, we feel the same. Sometimes stresses that's and it's easy what, and a blessing. It's a, it's a double-edged it sword isn't. for sure, right? We have lots of um, spirited conversations in our house, <laughs> you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, but, but other than it's, it's you've got to have an outlet, right? When you feel like you're on an island, that's the, that's the problem, I think, with that stress, because that's when it really starts to, to build up and, and, and cause just anguish everywhere. Um, you got to have an outlet for it, uh, whether it's a physical outlet or whether it's a, a conversational outlet or both. Um, that's that's what I would say. And very very good question though, because I know that it's a it's a it's a real problem when you're yeah. when you're trying to move forward. Both great points. Thank you so much. It's that's it's awesome. I can see how both would work. Um, yeah, and so we don't have a ton of time, but Tara. I'm going to open it up to questions and see if there's anybody yeah, out there. If there's any questions, and I'll ask another one while um, we're seeing if anybody wants to put their hand up. But um, one thing we haven't really had a lot of time to touch in, touch on, but I would love for you to share is how do you instill this in your team? Like, tell us some tips or some leadership mentality because you've built a big team of folks that do what you do. Yeah, I, I think that um, it, it's very much like. Um, in our world, because what we, we don't, we don't have people that work for us. We have people that work with us. And we say, army, right, right? we say we're in business for ourselves, but not by ourselves. And that's what I love about the system that we work in. Um, but I, with them, it's literally don't measure yourself against the success of someone else. We have leaderboards, we have competitions, we have all those kind of things, but you got to beat you yesterday. That's all you got to do. If you're fighting to, to get better or to improve, whether it be personally, uh, whether it be health wise with dietary, you know, whatever, don't compare yourself to the rest of the world on Facebook or on, on even on the leaderboard. Somebody that's been doing it for 20 years is going to be more successful on a daily basis with their closes and with those kind of things than somebody that's just getting started. So that's what I was told a long time ago was when you look at that leaderboard, find somebody like you. Find somebody that started when you did or that you've met at an event and you talk to those guys and you guys just say, hey, let's just compete. Right. Let's 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 match up and then see where we can go. Um, and I think that's the biggest piece is to not not have unrealistic expectations for yourself. Kimberly's not a big fan of reality. And, and that's that's a I'm a realist and, and she's the, the I'm optimist. not. <laughs> but um, that's what I would say is, is when you when you give yourself a measuring stick, make sure it's something that 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 you should beat yourself up about if you should ever beat yourself up, you know, not, not something that's unattainable at the point, at mm -hmm. this current point. Mm -hmm. And I think just model it, right. Mm -hmm. Practice what you preach. I think that's in life. And, and you, you, you guys are clearly doing that. You know what your, your philosophy is coming over um, to me as uh, tough love. There's so much out there right now, which is important about giving yourself grace and self-care. And I, I embrace all of that. Um, but sometimes I guess it can go so much the other way that you find yourself almost victimizing yourself and you have the opposite spirit of that. We, we're, we're pretty um, harsh, especially with our kids and our team about excuses, right? And you can say the- Yeah, the I mean, it's, it's one of those things that uh, one of my mentors said one time, he said, excuses, no matter how valid. Because sometimes they are very valid, right? Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Excuses, no matter how valid, when used only weaken the character. And I think that, that um, we are a function today or we are where we are today based on choices that we've made in the past. Yes, there have been things that have happened to us that, that we could not control, but we could control the choice as to how we react to those things. And so um, it's not about, it's, I mean, there, there are 
victimizations and there are things that 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 happen to people that are not their choice um but how we respond to those is is something that it takes maturity and it takes focus and understanding and to be able to see practice, that I think, but. but yeah that's that's the thing uh that is mm -hmm. the, the i think our kids would agree with you that that they get a little tough love sometimes too <laughs> we, we we call it lazy parenting that's that's our name for it but um i've never done my child's homework for them um, if they come to me and they procrastinated and they've got a three page paper due tomorrow and it's 10 PM and I'm busy doing something else, I'm going to say, I love you. And I mean it, but you had, you knew about this assignment and uh, it's not my paper to write. So. But tell me at least in your lifetime, you've built a diorama. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> We haven't. No, we have not. We have not. I will tell you this. Now, we were teachers too, remember? Like that's right. where their lessons and learning come in is when they do. Right? We went in for a we went, I love, very brief. We went in, they had a bread project and they had to, all the kids had to make a bread from a different country. And there was a tiny little Montessori school downtown Charleston. So they could do these kind of things. They bring in their breads and these people, all these kids have the most elaborate breads magic. and everything. And ours was like flat, didn't rise. There was something <laughs> that was just awful with it. But we knew walking in, she did that. And that was her bread and then and, and, and the learning experience. So oh, I love it. I love it. You guys, I could ask you guys questions forever. I am beyond grateful that we did this. Um, would you um while I close us out? Two quick things. Any last words, any last piece of advice for aspiring entrepreneurs? And then please put your um, how to find you in the chat. Okay. Okay. I think our, our my last advice for aspiring entrepreneurs is don't quit. Remember your why and don't quit because it's easy to quit. And sometimes in the beginning, it's not going to be easy, um, but don't quit because it's worth it. Yep. As far as that goes, in order to not quit, you have to start. And, and that's the other big step is, is stepping just, you know, now, now's the time to go all the way back to the very beginning, what Stacy said, what is, it is now. Um, and if you don't do it now, then when, and if not you, then who, um, if there's something you're passionate about that you want to change, or you want to get involved in, uh, we can't wait for other people to, to, to be passionate about those things. We got to be the example. So, um, thank you so much for having us on here. I'm honored to be here. Um, I, I, I love being able to do these things. It's very difficult to listen to you, Tara, say so many flattering things about us because I'm, I'm more about um, uh, other people and them, them getting their successes. And I just, but being able to be here was, was fantastic. And it brought us conversationally to places that we haven't been in many years, just knowing we were going to be on here talking about this. So thank Aww, you. Thank you guys so much. You Yes, thank you. Um, hopefully you'll come back on a Monday where we'll talk money. Happy to. <laughs> Love to. Absolutely. I am going to virtually digitally wrap my arms around anyone and everyone who's listening with closing out with our seven tenets from Patty Dabrowski, which I think are very, very relevant today. And the first of those is love. Remember to lead with a spirit of love. It will never serve you wrong. Give just like Zach and Kimberly, give of your talents, of your time, of your energy. It will come back to you tenfold. And let's think about stressing less. How do we stress less? Let's get your sleep, eat more plants, and don't forget to laugh. Laugh out loud, throw your head back, and laugh with reckless abandon. And with that, move that body, move what your mama gave you. <laughs> you all next time. Hope I was like, you can jump in jacks. This is my jumping jacks. <laughs> That's right. You love those jumping jacks. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Zach and Kimberly. Thank you, Zach. Thank you so much. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you.